how it was life when you first arrived here? Did you have any struggles? I came here in November 27, 1978. And I arrived in Chicago with $42,000. I didn't even know where to go. I know I have relatives in Ohio here. And luckily a person helped me in the airport. I showed him the address and he put me in the plane and came to Ohio, which my sister and her husband, they were here. And uh, it was hard for me at the beginning because I had to go to school. And uh, they helped me actually the first quarter, they paid $600 for me to, to go to school. And at that time, for me, $600 is too much money for me. I had only $42, and what am I going to do? Then I ended up start going to college and start working. I, my first job was working at the valet park in the Sheraton Hotel. I was getting $1.78 an hour. And after that, I started looking for other things to do. And it happened I was doing three jobs at the same time. Working salesman, work at the Sheraton, work in the kitchen. And I used to get to sleep only maybe three or four hours sleep, some, some weeks. I, I didn't get much sleep. Uh, I wanted to accomplish myself. I wanted to be, uh, when I go back to my country, my family wanted to be proud of me, my mom and dad especially, because they were opposing me to come here. And as, as I said before, I had a dream, I want to come to America. So I established myself, I worked very hard, and I met the wife in 1985. She was going to school, she, was, she spent about seven years back and forth between here and Egypt, while I was working here, and uh, when she came back, we felt like we were married again, because it was kind of like, you know, we were married, but she was at a distance. And uh, we have been working since. We establish ourselves, alhamdulillah, great. And uh, she's doing her, uh, she have her own dental office. And we have, uh, I have my business also, and the kids help me in it. We have, uh, we are in real estate. We do real estate, commercial buildings, it's rented. And we have a car dealer. And uh, we send the kids to school, it was very expensive. I didn't want them to come out of the school with the student loans. So we have to pay for the school while they're going. And it got to the point some when they were going the three of them at the same time, we were paying like almost a little over eleven to twelve thousand dollars each quarter. And it was very difficult for us. But thanks God they all graduated. And the wife graduated and she's doing good in her dental office. And uh, that's how we started. It was a very difficult beginning. Very, very difficult beginning. You know, the first thing was the language was a big problem for me. And to know your way around was a little bit obstacle. Uh, to dream, my dream was to have a car and one day I'll have a house. That was my dream. And then, alhamdulillah, we achieve all our goals. I mean, you know. Yeah. So there is nothing impossible, everything is very possible. If you put your mind to it, it's, you'll achieve your goals. You'll get there. Yeah. And Dr. Jihan, you have a dentist office, right, here in Columbus? Yes, I do. And uh, of course you have customers from Americans and, and Arabs yes. and otherwise. Oh. Uh, like, yes. How did that, knowing that you're an Arab American, did that affect your business at all? Uh, I don't think so. You know, uh, people after they come and they get the, the kind of service that I offer for them, they're like, they're very happy and they appreciate, you know, what I do and even where I come from. Mm -hmm. you know, even like, though she get more patients than some other doctors because she's female, she speaks the languages. And her office is probably the only office I have uh, speaking four languages there. Yes. So they can... In and Arabic, yeah. Latinos, Somalian, and the English. So any patient comes in does not speak English. They have a person, you know, we are assistant. Yeah. They speak uh, different languages, all of them. Yeah, we do so that. So she's doing very well. She's very successful. She's actually one of the good doctors in Kuwait. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. And I, like uh, Muhammad said, when I first came here, you know, it was really difficult. Uh, uh, I was. Uh, 
21, my husband 27 when we got married. We were both working. Uh, my first job was at Pizza Hut. I still remember it. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> and now thinking about it, you know, from Pizza Hut to where I'm at right now, I feel blessed. Uh, I feel very happy that I was able to accomplish what I, or do what I did, you know, and going to college and raise my kids and put them through school, me and my husband. You know, I feel very happy, very proud of what I did. So when did you get a chance of meeting all those awesome people that you have the pictures of in your office? That was back in, uh, probably my beginning was to get involved in, in those uh, things uh, back in 94. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when I started getting involved in, you know, in the local governments and things like that. So throughout the years, from 94 till those days, you know, I'm still very active. And uh, I represent the community here, I represent our, uh, we have a very large community in, the, in Columbus. I represent the community in multiple levels in Washington. Lots of times when they have the peer process and they used to come to Washington from over, overseas and uh, I always invited and get my ticket to be invited and actually I had clearance to the White House, you know, it wasn't easy to get in so they have to check your records and all that. So uh, I've been there many, many, many times. I attended most of the peace uh, uh, court uh, meetings in Washington. I was invited too. So how did your dream evolve from only having a car and a house, and maybe someday you're going to have a house, to like actually being in that position, like being involved in politics and economics and businesses? Determination. We need determination. I'm also a private pilot. I learned how to fly. I wanted to do too many things, what I wanted to, I had so much energy and I didn't waste my time. So any opportunity that I was thinking about, I want to do it. So I started businesses in 1980, which I came here in 1978, so within two years I had the business, Cincinnati. And uh, after that I started the first business, then I moved to another different businesses. I, I have probably in total about 12 different categories of businesses. And thanks God, we have been very successful. We did not fail any of them. <clears throat> now for the last few years, we got into the retail business, we focus on the real estate, which is much more productive for us and easier. And with the age, you just, you want to relax, take a little break. And uh, I want to spend time with the family more I feel like the quality time now is to spend with the family and the kids and just to be able to travel without having that stress in you where I'm going to come up with, I'm going to pay the bills. So, uh, as I said, determination that you want to achieve your goal, you want to be some important person in your life, you want to be an important uh, figure. You have to be part of the, the culture or part of the society which you just have to continue uh, going. I mean, you know, determination to get you where you want to get. Mm. Even though it was a struggle for me to come up with the money at the beginning, but I was working so many hours. I believe it or not, from probably the mid 80s till just maybe the last couple, few years, I was putting hours, 15 and 17 hours per day. That's seven days a week. I never took a vacation till actually probably five years ago when the wife. Uh, she started having her dental office. We started to be a little bit more comfortable financially. That's when I started able to take vacations. But for probably 25 to 30 years, I never took a vacation. And yeah. it seems through your business, you're offering a lot of um, job employment opportunities for younger generations. Can you tell us about your employees? Like, are they, where are they from, basically? Well, it's, uh, we hired lots of people. We had too many different, whether it's local people or some of our people who comes in from overseas. We never made the difference between them, whether a person local and talking like, you know, born here, or whoever can do the job, we'll hire them. And uh, we treat them well. Always, I felt like, you know, I'm investing in that person, the money I'm giving into him. I treat them with respect. And they were very loyal to us. We never had issues with employees. Very loyal. We treat them with full respect, pay them on time, uh, treat them with dignity, 
and they were loyal to us even though at one point they have 12 uh, businesses running in the same time from Colorado to Ohio to Columbus and Cincinnati and the same time so I was just a traveling a lot of times I just do a lot of traveling at the same time I was going to school to college so I was flying sometime I could be in Colorado and my exams tomorrow I just come and take the exam and leave so I can and see so. that there's like a lot of similarities between you and my dad that both of you, you started like from nothing and you came to like really do something um, but then I always like hear my dad telling me that I, he wants me to be not just like him but even better how do you like what do you do you feel the same thing for your children how do you push them towards that goal the time has changed what we've been through you will never be through I always try not to let my kids go through what I have okay. been through but uh, to be like your dad or a little bit better take his advice when he tell you do something or the way to do it listen to him and take everything he said in consideration take his advice because the only person who wants you to be better than him is your dad and the father always wants to have his kids successful and even better than him doing better we gain out of the pride we get security for you and your family in the future and the father will advise you he been through this that's the expertise the expert the experience he had before the obstacles he didn't want you to go through it so you just get the the result if he tell you do it that's the way it should be done listen you know. and do you, how do you push your your um, children like your your adult children right now they're not children but <laughs> i lecture them in probably twice a week and sometimes they hate me <laughs> they don't want no lectures because every time you know we sit down i have a few minutes with them i try to always remind them constant remind them you do this and you do this and you do this so the main thing i want to keep them away from all the troubles that's one thing mm -hmm. i want them to keep their heritage where they came from i want them to be a good citizen of the country here and abroad and i want them to be very highly educated it's not just finish high school and i want them to be an, a person where the people take him as a role model when your father remind you on daily basis like that eventually you're going to listen and uh, so it's the first thing you want to finish your school your education that's the most important thing and use your vision you have to have vision you cannot just look you know what's what are you going to do today you have to take for like 10 years and 20 years what am i going to be in 20 years the 30 years and 50 years from now when am i going to be retired am i going to continue working for somebody the paycheck sometimes yeah it's great but it's, you want to be somebody there you want the people to take you as a role model Do you have anything final to say about um, how you got here? Anything else to say about your culture or your homeland that you want Americans to know? I want the American to know that, uh, as I said before, they did not have a clue how the people they were living in third countries, most of the American people take for granted. They live in a heaven compared to the third country. I love my country and I will never <coughs> wanted to see the people uh, thinking bad about our country. We have good values, we have family tradition, we have good values. It's not even founded in any societies, but probably in the Middle East. We're very warm people, very generous. We're honest, we look for our neighbors. Uh, the lack of information, the lack of knowledge that the American society had before they always assume what we are. They assume everybody has a camel, for example. Everybody has an oil well, which is not. We work. We're very hard-working people. We want it to be like everybody else. Uh, and we're normal people. Years ago, they, before the, the war in Iraq, they didn't know anything about the Middle East. If they see somebody wearing the veil, they look at them like not an educated person. No. The women wear the veil in their heads because they choose it. No man will force his wife. It's her option, her choice. If she want to wear it, fine. If she didn't want to wear it, fine. Uh, so it's, uh, as I said, you know, it's, uh, the wife has a choice to, to wear, uh, to practice her religion. My wife, sometimes she wear it, sometimes she don't. So it's her choice. I didn't ask, you know. 
So my advice to the young generation to look for the best, to be hard working, to focus on their school, to stay away from all the troubles and bad friends and all this little uh, crazy stuff going around and look for a future. Think about your future for 20 and 30 and 50 years. Where am I going to be? Am I going to be just another person living, make the living and eat and sleep? Or I want to be an important person to be productive. Each one of us has a responsibility. Each one of us should live from the standpoint. He leave this earth. The people, they said, oh, he did something. He left some behind. Your legacy. You have to leave some behind. The people look after you. Yes. Yes. Uh, I agree. You know, this is, uh, you have to have a purpose in life. Uh, you have to, um, in order to be happy, I think you have to contribute. Not just take. You have to give. Um, you know, uh, for me, I try to, you know, help, um, like younger people also, and uh, like students that wants to become a dentist, they, like my doors are open, they always come and uh, they can uh, shadow me. And actually, three of the people that shadowed me, they all got into the dental school. <laughs> I'm so happy for them. Uh, also, I uh, like the dental assisting uh, schools, they always send people there. I actually have like some awards from them because I was helping a lot. Uh, the, the dental school and dental assisting school. So, and always uh, looking for ways to contribute more and more. You know, uh, always come up with idea. You know, how can I con contribute to my community? How can I, uh, like my husband said, uh, said leave a thumb, uh, uh, like thumbprint. You know, uh, you know after you leave, what did you, you know, was your, uh, did you have a purpose? Did you do something? You know, when we go travel overseas, like especially in Palestine, we do help, <coughs> you know, whatever we can, it's not a large amount, but what we can, we have for the schools, hospitals. Uh, I sponsor five kids from the university. When I was this trip, they are smart kids, but they were short in their uh, fees. We took care of it, we set off. Yeah. So uh, we try to help as much as we can. And always, just like she's, the wife said, the doctor said, or Jihan said, contribute. It doesn't mean you have to contribute what you have. What you can, what you can give. When you give, when you learn how to give, you feel better, always. Yes. And the person who gives feels always much better than the person who takes. So <clears throat> whether you give advice, you give knowledge, you give a, ha a hand to somebody, you contribute what you can. It doesn't have to be money all the time. Maybe sometimes you just didn't have it. But somebody asks you for assistance, for help, don't back down. Just do it. Yes. Uh, I agree. You know, uh, uh, 